Hi, this is Greg Benz with another quick luminosity masking tutorial. Uh, in this demo, I'm actually going to recreate an edit that I did previously using a traditional luminosity masking approach um, based on the, the free luminosity masking actions I have on my website. Uh, this time I'm going to use my new Lumencia uh, actions panel for Photoshop. It's essentially a, a plug into Photoshop that makes the process of working with luminosity masks uh, much simpler and much more visual. And in this demo, we're going to take this uh, image here of Sunset Cliffs in San Diego from this starting point, which is straight out of Lightroom. I made some initial adjustments. It looks pretty good, but the sky is fairly washed out. Doesn't have the colors the way I remember them that night. And we're going to bring it to this finished image here, which looks much more powerful and vibrant. So again, I've got another video um, linked here. You can see the original. Uh, here, I just want to show you how I did this with Lumencia and I think you'll see that it's a, a more visual and, and faster process this way. So uh, first thing we need to do is load up a luminosity mask to select the sky and I'm just working down the light selections until lights three looks pretty good. The sky is selected. The foreground that I want to leave intact is relatively not selected. Some of the buildings near the edge here are selected. We'll have to deal with that and the lower parts of the image and the water and all are selected, but that's gonna be easy to knock out. So this to me is all about getting a nice transition zone and then I can deal with knocking out the bottom. So let's load this to a curve. So I just click on curve and it's already loaded my luminosity mask we just previewed onto this curve and I'm just gonna click on it and quickly adjust the sky here by bringing down the luminosity considerably until I get something that I think looks pretty decent and may give it a, just a little bit more kind of uh, contrast and let's see how that looks. So um, that I think is added a nice pop to the sky. Obviously the foreground here has gotten washed out because the luminosity mask is still applying to parts of the image down below. So we want to control that by putting a mask on our mask. So I'm gonna do that. The default here is just a, a white mask so everything is being applied. But I'm gonna grab the gradient tool and it's already loaded up with a black to white transition. So I'm gonna drag this up and create a gradient here. And so what that's done is created this gradient that blocks out the bottom and allows the top. And that's, so this mask is controlling this mask and the net effect is letting this change come through, which looks really nice. And I liked in Lumencia to combine the mask. To me, it's uh, a more simple, straightforward visual way of working with them going forward. We can see that there's still some areas of collateral damage here where some of these foreground buildings, you look at this one here, um, are getting darkened and I wanna fix that. So I could fix it on this mask here or I can just go ahead and combine these masks and work on the combined effect. So when we do this, what was two masks is now reduced to one. It's a lot easier to understand what's going on. It also reduces the file space. Previously, it was 265 megs. Now we're down to 208. So saved ourselves some file space by combining those two still has the exact same effect. I'm just loading up a black brush and I'm now gonna paint out these areas of the foreground that I want to not be adjusted by my luminosity mask. So let's just kick up the flow a little bit here. And I'm gonna paint these out. And because this transition is somewhat subtle to begin with, um, I don't have to be uber careful about how I'm doing this. Some images, um, I couldn't be so cavalier about this, but this is gonna work just fine here. Um, I could zoom in more or use other selections if I needed to be a little more fine, but in this case, I really don't need to do this. It's gonna look great. We can see here we've got a nice transition zone. There's nothing else in the foreground selected. I could decide that I want to knock out this area of the water if that doesn't look right, but let's take a look at the adjusted image. So we've gone from here to here it's gonna click on that a few times to really get a sense of that. Um, the water, um, to me, could have just a little bit more punch. I'm gonna make a quick pass, just a little bit little more of the uh, original back through. And this looks really nice. Um, I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more pop to the sky, and I can do that by adding a hue saturation luminosity layer and kick that up. And of course, that is adjusting the entire image and we could either group these two and use this mask or I can just simply use a clipping mask here. And so now my HSL layer is applying to the curve, which is controlled by the mask. So these work now together. And so we've gone from here 
to here. And if we look at the details, this is a very powerful mask. There are no white edges. There are no telltale signs of retouching this. It is a very clean mask. You look at before and after and very subtle, very printable result with no further adjustments needed at all. And if we look at the history here, we've obviously landed on just a couple final adjustments, but here are all the steps we took to get there. So in Lumencia, every single button you press on the panel generates a single um, action here. So very easy to step around in your history, going back to the different you know, layer selections I had. So if you ever have to undo something, it's very straightforward. But basically we just applied a couple different lights masks till we found the one we wanted, added our curve, tweaked that curve, threw it in a group, where we restricted it with a gradient, then merged those two together to create this joint mask, did some brushing on it to refine that mask to get rid of a few additional areas, then just added our hue saturation and you know tweaked up the color and clipped it to this one so that it was controlled through the same luminosity mask. So very straightforward process, less than five minutes in a demo. If I wasn't speaking so much, probably would have been done in about 30 seconds.